Eagles Entertainment. Welcome, Eagles, everywhere to the Eagles Insider Podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. I'm Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro at Lincoln Financial Field. The Eagles getting ready for Sunday's game against the 10 and 2 New Orleans Saints. And in this tailgate edition of the Eagles Insider Podcast, we are going to have Jim Kramer delivering a message talking about what else? The quarterbacks. We'll also hear from former Eagle Darren Sproles. He's our Microsoft Teams Eagles Legend of the Week. It's his first year out of football. What's he doing? How does he stay so competitive? You will find out how Darren Sproles is filling his time. And yes, he is staying very, very competitive. We're also going to hear from the Eagles starting quarterback Jalen Hurts, who met the media on Wednesday. He's been practicing all week, obviously taking the number one reps and he is ready to go. Let's begin the podcast with some perspective from Eagles defensive end Brandon Graham, who has played in 155 games as an Eagle. You know that. He ranks fourth among all Eagles defensive players with 155 games played. He's tied with Trent Cole, behind only Brian Dawkins, Chuck Bednarik, and former Eagles safety Randy Logan. So BG, obviously one of the all-time greats here, and in a difficult 3-8-1 and one season, he offers this look from inside the Eagles locker room. Defensive end Brandon Graham joins me. And uh, BG, let's first talk about you. 155 games played as a Philadelphia Eagle, 156 coming on Sunday. And they say that making it to the NFL is one thing. Staying in the NFL is something entirely different. How do you feel about your longevity as an accomplishment in the NFL? Uh, I feel good. Um, I'm thankful. You know, um, thank God that, you know, he's given me uh, all the ability to be able to go do my job every day. And, um, you know, for me, I got to make that choice to do it every day. So I'm thankful for that. And the people that I got to meet along the way that helped me uh, during the hard times. And, uh, man, I'm just I'm so thankful just to be here. If you could find a young BG out there somewhere, what advice would you give him? Uh, if I can find them out there, uh, get you a regiment early. Uh, make sure that you uh, don't take no days for granted. Uh, make sure that you practice hard um, every day and just have fun. Enjoy, enjoy that moment of being in this in the league for whatever season it is. Uh, enjoy it. Brandon, how important is it to win in this league to really maximize how much fun it is to be an NFL player? Uh, it's, it's, it's big. Every week is up and down, uh, based off if you won or not the fan from the fans to the, the coaches, the people that's in the building to your own personal, uh, feeling of when you lose or win, you know, uh, try to not to be too high about it when you win, but you know, you try not to be too low either, uh, because you got opportunity as long as you got opportunity ahead, uh, it's always good. Uh, the last game of the season, you always want to end strong, uh, regardless if you're going to the playoffs or not. But I know for, for us, uh, we still got an opportunity. So, you know, we got to make sure that we take full advantage of these last four weeks. Yeah, I wonder, give me your perspective. 3-8-1 and one is not where the Eagles want to be, where the team expected to be. Yet you come in every day, you're smiling, you're giving maximum effort. How do you do it? Uh, well, first off, you know, you got to play for that name on your back. You don't want to go out there looking bad at all. And then uh, on top of that, uh, you want the, you want to win because uh, next year I don't want to wait a whole couple months or a whole bunch of months just to get back to another season when we could take advantage of it right now uh, because you don't know what next year is going to bring and some people is not going to be here. And so uh, we all know that. And I just got to make sure that uh, we maximize everything we can in this season while we're here. Brandon, take me inside the locker room. Uh, unprecedented move here. Carson Wentz sits down. Jalen Hurts starts on Sunday. What is it like for you knowing Carson as you know him? And what's it like in the locker room? Uh, just knowing Carson, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, just let him know, hey, man, it's going to be all right. All you got to do is keep sharpening your sword and just staying ready. And um, at the end of the day, um, that happens when we all don't play good and not playing as good as we would like to play. Uh, sometimes you got to put another guy in because it is politics. You know, a lot of people want to see what we have, especially because if they don't feel we're going to the playoffs anyway, why not? But um, it, we still got chance. We still got a uh, opportunity. And um, all Carson got to do is just be the great teammate that he's been and just keep on competing, which I know he will, and, uh, and, and uplift Jalen since that's going to be the guy. Do you feel for what Carson's going through? 
Oh yeah, I feel it. You know, because uh, I've been there before. Uh, I've been on the on the on the end of um, in the beginning. It didn't go like I wanted it to go, and so in the beginning it was going good for him. And then you know he got hurt, obviously, and I got hurt my first year. And then trying to come back from those injuries, you don't play as good as as you was playing before. And right now he's in that that funk. I, I feel like you know he's going to get out of it though. Uh, once we get it like a regular off season, uh, if not if he don't if he don't get back uh, this year, I for sure know uh, he got a good chance next year um, to really uh, step his game up. What do you know about Jalen Hurts just from his personality and the presence that he has around this football team? Well, he's a competitor. He's fun to be around. I mean that's always good. And uh, you know he's a guy that's going to go out there and and. And he can make all the throws. You just gotta you just give him that experience of being out there and just being being who he is. But um, you can tell that he's a leader. Uh, he he, he um, demands a lot from the offense uh, when he's in the huddle. From what I hear, and I'm excited about uh, what's to come for him. BG, your assignment on Sunday is the New Orleans Saints. Great offense. Um, I guess Taysom Hill will be the quarterback. We don't know yet. Uh, what do you expect from the Saints offensively? Uh, they're gonna try to run the ball um, and then block him up, uh, protect Taysom, and, um, and you know he's gonna run the ball a little bit too. But you know we gotta make sure we get uh, number, get to the ball in numbers, stop that run, and then we are gonna get everything we want with uh, with them dropping back and you know making him a passer. BG, it's been a while since you've had a sack. How how uh, frustrated or anxious or angry are you to get into the backfield? Uh, you know I. I try not to worry too much about it because I wasn't worrying in the beginning when I got when I started fast. But it's not how you start; it's how you finish. And hopefully, these next four games, I can have um, as many, you know, and make up for the ones that I missed for the uh, for the four games that I missed. Twelve games into the season, BG, um, how's the body feeling? Body's feeling good. Uh, I love how our schedule has, you know, kind of went back a little bit uh, because trying to get our body back together. I, I think that. Um, I got a lot left, a lot left in me. I just got to make sure that I keep on, um, keep my regimen up, keep on working, and uh, keep taking care of myself. BG, finally, what is the message that you have? You've got a great relationship with the fans. What, what do you say to the fans right now? Just keep riding with us, like y'all do. Uh, keep bringing it. I know, uh, you know, you're gonna get your feelings, um, get everything out during the week. But when it's time to, for game time, we need all. We need you sitting right in front. You know, right in front uh, at your TV, yelling and screaming, and just know we're going to get this thing turned around these next four games. Eagles defensive end Brandon Graham, thank you so much for joining me. Good luck on Sunday against New Orleans. Thank you. Okay, so talking about Hurts, he met the media, and um, hey, he's been in this big moment before at the University of Alabama, at the University of Oklahoma, national championship play. So replacing Carson Wentz last week in Green Bay, and throwing this touchdown pass. It is fourth and 18 from the Green Bay 32. Hurts is rolling. He's looking. He puts it in the air. Touchdown, Greg Ward. What a throw and what a catch. <laughs> what a great throw. Listen, he buys the time necessary to allow Greg Ward to find an opening in that defense, and he throws him open. When he throws the ball to the corner of the end zone on the right side, it's Greg Ward, go get the football, and Ward does. Those kind of big moments are nothing new for Jalen Hurts. He spoke to the media about that, his intention of going out, executing the game plan, and just playing his game and having a whole lot of fun. Obviously, it's, it's a great opportunity. You know, Coach talked to me, talked to both of us, and it's a great opportunity moving forward. So um, we're, we're focused on things we have to do this week, and I just want to take advantage of the opportunity and do what I can do to help this team. They have a lot of great players, uh, fast, physical football team, um, and they play really hard. So uh, we're, we're playing against a great def defense this week, and um, we got to do what we can on this side to um, – Control the controllables, you know, control our effort, control our, our execution, control our mindset and go into it the right way and go go out there and play a hard for our game. We're just going out there and going to work, you know. Like I've said earlier, um, roles have changed, but preparation hasn't. So for me, I have the same intent, the same intent, the same focus. Everything's the same moving forward as far as me trying to be the best player I can be and um, help this team. I mean, we're working together, um, communicating on things. You know, he has five times 
um, as much experience that, than I have. So he's always a, a helping hand when a question comes up. And in the theme of the Eagles and what they're doing from the locker room and how they're adjusting to this change, I think it's important to note this. Some words from Jason Kelsey about what it means to be a Philadelphia Eagle. It's not just about winning on the field. It's about supporting your teammates. Great stuff here from Eagle Center, Jason Kelsey. We all got jobs, right? We're all here for a reason. And we're here to be Philadelphia Eagles. And uh, you know, part of that job entails is to go out there and do everything you can uh, in the situation, in the, in the, in the uh, parameters that you're being asked to do your job. And um, you know, I think that we are all not just professionals, but good people. We care about each other. The first and foremost job of being a Philadelphia Eagles is to be a good teammate. And that entails, uh, you know, giving of yourself to others, doing everything you can to help the person next to you succeed. So obviously it's a bad situation uh, personally for the careers of some guys. But, you know, we have a good team here in terms of, you know, everybody wants everyone to do well. Uh, we have a good culture. Uh, you know, in particular, Carson Wentz is an incredible teammate. So I have no doubt in my mind that he's going to do everything he can to help Jalen Hurts succeed. And uh, I think that anybody who isn't doing that for all of their teammates uh, should be on the first ticket out of here uh, because that's not the culture of the team that I want to be on. So um, I have supreme confidence that all of these guys are going to do anything they can uh, to not only succeed for everyone else, uh, but to put their best foot forward uh, to try and get a win. It's complicated. I mean, obviously the offensive line hasn't been great. Uh, you know, we've got a lot, have had a lot of injuries. We've had a lot of this and that, but ultimately, you know, I think that, you know, we haven't, we just haven't gone out there and, and functioned well. We haven't been cohesive enough, um, not just as players, but structurally. I think that there's, there's a lot of different things you can look at. And, um, um, you know, whenever you're this bad, it's never just one person. It's never just one position group. And it's never just players, coaches, front office. It's everybody. Um, and that's the reality. Um, you know, we should be able to manufacture more points than we're putting up, and we should be able to play better no matter what's called and put up more points than we're putting up. So this is ultimately a failure on a lot of different levels uh, to facilitate a good offense. Um, and, uh, you know, we just got to keep trying to do better. And I think that that's when you see decisions like this being made are when you're trying, you know, you, you're trying to get something going. And, uh, you know, we owe it to the, to the rest of the team here. We owe it to the Eagles to try and, you know, we owe it to the fan base, certainly, uh, to figure something out. However, you know, whether it's too late or not, you know, you still keep working. You still keep fighting, and you still keep trying to grind out and figure out what's going on. And you still keep trying to freaking win. You still keep trying to have success on game day. And uh, that's what we're going to do this week. Jim Kramer, the author of Mad Money, the host Everybody knows who he is. Gigantic Eagles fan. Frustrated like everybody. 3-8-1 and one is not where anyone wants to be, nor where anyone thought the Eagles would be. And so Jim Cramer has some words to say about the Eagles quarterback picture. I'm Jim Cramer, and welcome to my world. You need to get in the game. Fools are going to go out of business, and he's nuts. They're nuts. They know nothing. I always like to say there's a bull market somewhere. And Mad to money. Just you can't afford to miss it. Hey, I'm Kramer. I'm going to be a little contrary here today. I know that the town, I know everybody's clamoring for Hurts, and I get that. It's been a painful year. But can I just say for a moment that there were some reasons why Wentz has not delivered. I had the privilege of pulling up with Carson Palmer this week. And Carson's an interesting guy. I mean, people don't maybe remember the end of his career when he wasn't that great. But I'm talking about the original Carson Palmer, who was just a killer and came in and really just set the league on fire and reminded me, look, look there's the line. There's the receivers. There's some coaching. There's some hitting. And he said, look, if you've been hit 50 times, you're not going to be able to deliver what you'd like to deliver. And it was really honest discussion because I know Carson makes a lot of money. And I know people just feel like, hey, you know what? You're really in the way, and now we're the worst in the East, and it's really bothersome. I just want to remind people what it was like in 2017, 2018, 2019, before he got hurt, before he had the concussion, before he had the back problem, before he had the, the leg problem. And we just have to just stop being Philadelphians for one second 
and just say, you know what? The guy was great, and he can be great again with some patience, with some coaching. I don't want him to start this week. I'm not a glutton for punishment. I'd like to win some. I don't want to tank. I don't care about the damn choice. I care about the W. But I also care about people's reputation. Having been thrown out of the bus a bunch of times in my career, many different guises, I just say, hold it. I'm not turning on Carson Wentz. I want Wentz to be better, and I'm pulling for Carson Wentz. I want to win this weekend. I wish the best of luck to Hurts and the gang. But let's stop being so critical, for heaven's sake. That guy is just a guy on a team that hasn't done well. And he's not the public face of the team. And it's time to stop picking on him. And that's how I feel ahead of a very big game this weekend that everyone once again thinks we're going to lose. Tired of searching for sports updates in different places? The Xfinity Sports Zone gives you the ultimate sports hub experience where you can find games, news, and highlights all in one place right on your TV. Follow the teams you love across your favorite sports. You can even use the voice remote to access stats and scores. With the Xfinity Sports Zone, everybody wins. Now that's simple, easy, awesome. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store for details. Restrictions apply. Requires Xfinity TV service with X1. Let's take time now to finish up the podcast and visit with one of the great Eagles of recent years, three-time Pro Bowler, somebody who, when you watched him at five feet, seven inches tall, you go, how in the world is Darren Sproles doing on the field what he's doing? Well, he's been just terrific, right? So Darren Sproles is now out in California, far away from the game of football. Will he return to the game in some capacity? Hey, let's find out. One-on-one with our Microsoft Teams Eagles Legend of the Week, former Eagles running back Darren Sproles. Hello, Eagles everywhere. I'm Eagles insider Dave Spadaro here at Lincoln Financial Field. And I spent, oh, so many years here watching great players suit up in Philadelphia Eagles uniforms. One of the very greatest joins us here as our Microsoft Teams Eagles Legend of the Week, former running back, kick returner, receiver, did it all, Darren Sproles. Darren, how are you, my man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I love it. How are you I just, guys doing? We're, we're, well, it's a tough year. You know how much better it is to win in the NFL than it is to not win in the NFL. But uh, we all have optimism that things will turn around here very quickly. I know that you are such a competitive guy. Um, and not playing football this year for the first time. How do you remain competitive? Where have you channeled your energies? <laughs> right now, I have been channeling my energy on playing golf right now. <laughs> so I, so I, so right now, that's like my that's like my thing now. So so um, like every Tuesday and Thursday, um, uh, that's what I go do. <laughs> And tell me about the Darren Sproles game off the tee, and how are you around the green, and how's that putting stroke? I am good getting on the green, but my putting right now is terrible. That's what I need to work on. <laughs> um, hey, Darren, you want to stay in the game, I imagine, in some capacity, right? I mean, you've been working with the Eagles a bit here. Um, is it a goal of yours to still work in football? Yeah. Um, like, my thing is I – Still want to be around the game, but I, I don't want to go all in with coaching, like, right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I need some years away, like, a little bit to, uh, before I really get in, like, the coaching, coaching. <laughs> well, that's a smart decision because coaches do nothing but work. I, I think you'd agree that coaches work harder than players. Would you agree with that? Yes. I, yes, I do. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, they put Dan- their – yeah. They put them real hours in. <laughs> they, they sure do. Darren, you had some special years here as a Philadelphia Eagle. You made the Pro Bowl for the first time, second time, and third time in your career. What made it so great being a Philadelphia Eagle? You know what? It, it, it was just like the people. the Like that building was just like great. Uh, like from the players to the front office. Like the, uh, uh, there's no better group than there. And how did you like the fan base? Because we all know that out in San, in San Diego, in New Orleans, great fan bases as well. But Philadelphia is a little bit different. <clears throat> and you really connected with these fans. Yeah, they, um, uh, the Philadelphia Eagle fan base, that 
They're the most realest. Like, uh, if you're doing bad, they gonna let you know you're doing bad. Uh, but if you're doing good, like, uh, um, uh, uh, uh-huh, they gonna let you know that too. So they just, uh, they just was the the most like realest fans. Well, that Darren, always kept you going. You never did anything wrong, so uh, they loved you. They loved number 43. They identified with you and your story and your stature and all the things you did to keep them so excited on game days and game nights. What do you think, what we remember as kind of your highlight as an Eagle? My highlight, I feel like, as an Eagle is uh, my first year there when we uh, we played the Colts. Uh, when we played the Colts there, like we were down, but... Uh, uh, we put together some great drives to uh, to bring us back for the win. And you were a beast in that game. I remember it very well. Darren, what was your key to success in the NFL? My key to success was was just always, always doing more. Like um, like on a practice field, doing more. Um, uh, uh, like in the meeting room and stuff like that. Like watching film. That was just mine. Like because I wasn't the biggest. Like with me, I always just felt like I had to do more. With that your was work just my e- thing. Yeah, your work ethic is legendary. Uh, the amount of time you put in on the practice field, off the practice field, in the weight room, in the film room, it really seemed to inspire a lot of the players in that locker room. Is that something that came naturally to you? Yeah, um, that could all started uh, back in junior high. That, um, like my junior high coach. He was someone that really like, like he wanted me to do more. Uh, and that's and then that's what kind of always stuck. It's kind of a great lesson to people. I would imagine during the course of your career, people said, "Hey, Darren, you're too small. You're never going to make it at the highest level." Was that a message you heard a lot in your youth? You know, I heard that pretty much all my life. But um, that just kept me going. It just kept me going. Um, it just kept me wanting to wanting to just prove to everybody that I can do it. What kind of an impact do you think you had on other players? Like I really hope that I had a good impact. Like this to this to pretty much just show people just show people like it doesn't matter um, like what your size in this game, as long as you got heart. That's really all that matters. Darren, as people fans around the league think of you and your career. And potentially a Hall of Fame career. We all think so in Philadelphia. What would you want those fans to think? Like with me, I just want the fans of Philadelphia, like just to know that, like when I stepped foot on that field, uh, I gave them everything I had. That's why I want to be remembered as. I think that's awesome. I think that's what every player should want to be remembered for. Do you miss hearing the crowd? Yes, I do. I do. <laughs> but, uh, but the thing I really miss is, uh, like, the locker room. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just being with the guys. That's what I really miss. Well, hey, maybe someday, if you keep applying yourself to the game of golf, we'll all <laughs> tune into a television, and, and there'll be a major playing, and everybody will once again stand up and clap for Darren Sproles. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Darren, it's great to see you. Great to hear from you. Uh, happy holidays to you and your family. And uh, hopefully we'll see you back in Philadelphia real soon. Thank you. Thank you. Darren Sproles, our Microsoft Teams Eagles Legend of the Week. That'll do it for this Eagles Insider Podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Thanks to Peter Kelly, Ray Doyle, and Trevor Hayes for their great work on this. Thanks to all of you for joining each and every episode. We are back on Sunday following the Eagles game against the Saints It's a 420 game, so make sure you're with us very shortly after the game for the instant reaction as Jalen Hurts makes his starting debut in the NFL. I'm Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro. Thanks for joining me, everybody, here on this Eagles Insider podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Have yourselves a great Eagles day, and fly, Eagles, fly. E-A-T-L-E-S, Eagles! There's still time to be in the stands at Lincoln Financial Field this season with an Eagles fan cutout. Put on your game day vest and upload a photo of yourself so that you can join us on game days. Fan cutouts printed by Rico are only $35, and orders of four or more receive a $5 discount per cutout. 
Best of all, your purchase benefits Eagles Autism Foundation and also waives the registration fee for the 2021 Eagles Autism Challenge event. Order today at PhiladelphiaEagles.com slash cutouts.